Hey everyone, welcome to the Knit and Crochet Spot. My name is Melissa and I'm coming to you from the suburbs of Atlanta, Georgia. Today is Sunday, March 13th. I hope everyone is doing well. If you're new here, I'd like to say welcome and let you know that this channel is about knitting and crochet and yarn. And if you're returning, I'd like to say welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. I truly appreciate your support. So first off, I'd like to apologize for not doing a video last week. I had every intention of videoing on Sunday, but things got busy and I ended up with a house full of people, which I'm very thankful for. But that meant that I just, I couldn't find any time to do any podcasting. And then when I did have the time, I was just too tired. And then uh, during the week, I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't find any time to do it. So I'm here today and I have a few things to share with you. I have one finished object six works in progress, and some acquisitions. So let's just get started. So my finished object is um, something I've been working on for the past few weeks, and it is a amigurumi, and here he is. He's all finished, and I really love how he turned out. He's got a little tail. So I still have to make him some clothes, which I have made him, uh, well, you'll see in works in progress, I've made him some clothes. So here he is. So this came out of, this amigurumi came out of this book, The Dress Up Amigurumi um, by this person. This, I got this book off of Amazon. And the pattern that I did is let's see uh oh i thought i had it i made the bear i made this bear and i gave him a white t-shirt instead of the blue so that i can make um different outfits and it will go with you know anything and then you know depending on how my granddaughter feels like she says it's a boy but you know she might Tomorrow, think it's a girl, so we can, you know, we can dress him up in anything. So, yes, yeah, so this book, um, so basically you make, you can make one of these characters and you can make them with or without the shirt. There's different patterns for that in the book. And then in the book, there's all kinds of outfits. These are just a very few of them. There's all kinds of outfits you can make. And the outfit that I'm going to eventually make, I've started. My granddaughter wants this. I'm going to be making this, the outfit. This outfit, this is the, um, it just says baby set. So I will be making her that. So the yarn that I used for this um, is I used the I Love This Yarn. This is Hobby Lobby yarn. It's the I Love This Yarn Sport Weight. Here's the label. Uh, all of this is the, all of this is the same yarn. Um, the brown, I, th I think it's just called brown. This this is called white, and I think this is called linen. And then it's the nose is black. I think that was basically all the colors. I can't find all the yarn bands for them. But yeah, that's white, brown, and I'm pretty sure this one is linen. And um, so I'll tell you about the yarn. <coughs> it's 100% acrylic. It's a number three. Um, let's see. It is 230 yards for 71 grams. And yeah, so that's that's all about the yarn. And here's the yarn label from Hobby Lobby. And I used, the crochet hook I used for this was a 3.25. Is that right? I don't even know where the crochet hook is. I thought I left it out. Let me see. Because I know I didn't use the crochet. Here it is. Let's see. Yeah, 3.25 crochet hook. 
Yeah, because the yarn that they recommend in the book is an actual sport weight, like a number two. So they want you to use like two millimeter. And so I used, because I don't have any, I don't have any of that, um, any of that yarn. So this is a DK and so I used a 3.25 millimeter. And there he is. He's super cute. So that is my one and only finished object. And I suppose technically he's not finished because I have to finish making his clothes. But so anyway, so I guess moving into um, works in progress, I'll show you what I have made for his clothes. I've just made the hat. So let me go back to the page that I was on. So I'm going to make this outfit here, the hat and the bib and the diaper, and most importantly is the bottle. My granddaughter wants the bottle very badly. And let's see. So this is all living in my Cottontail Farms bag. So this, and I used, a, um, well, show you, let me show you the hat first. So here's the hat. And did I, I don't think, do I still have it? Yeah, I still have it attached to the yarn. Here's the yarn. Because I've made the hat. Here are the ears where the ears can go. Um, but I'm going to rip out the last row and do it with a smaller hook. So it kind of hugs the bear's head a bit better. I'll put it on the bear. So you can see it kind of just, I think it'll look a bit better if I do that. It doesn't really, I guess, I wish the placement of the ears were a bit farther back because I feel like the hat would fit a bit better. But, oh, oh. So here he is with the hat on. I guess it looks okay, but I was just sort of thinking maybe if I made this a little bit tighter well it really looks okay I don't know I was thinking my thinking was to make the use a smaller hook to do this last round and it would kind of maybe just fit him a, a little bit better but it doesn't really look that bad so here he is with the hat it's cute he's so cute I didn't do in the pattern it shows like these stitches here in a different color and I thought no I'm not it's just more yarn to weave in. So there he is with his hat. And I used this yarn. Um, it's the same. Um, I love this yarn, sport weight. And I think this is um, this colorway is, I know it's on here, a crisp air, a pretty blue. And I used a 3.25 hook for that as well so so if you looked at the pattern again or if you if you saw the picture not the pattern but the picture actually the um it shows you the doll without a shirt on but well, mine already has a shirt, so instead of, I think, I'm going to do everything in just this blue, including the diaper and the bib, just so it kind of will contrast with the white shirt. Yeah. So, yep, so that's all of that. And that is my finished object and my first works in progress. Okay. So make sure I don't lose this. All right, so let's see. So I guess I will show you my socks. I have two sock whips to show you. Hang on, I wanna get my sock blockers for this first sock. I gotta take my, I still have these socks on there. So the first sock 
Um, this was a works in progress last time I podcasted and I have the first sock done. Let me get comfy. Um, I will show it to you. Here's the sock that I have done. I'll put it on, on the blocker. And this is a free pattern by K, the crazy sock lady. It's free on Ravelry. And I just had the first sock done and I haven't started the second one. So, see I have them. So here it is. So here it is. <clears throat> the first sock is finished. I was trying to get it up close. You see there is a bit of a pattern. And I have the stitch markers in because the pattern is a four row repeat. So every time I started a new um, repeat, I put the um, a stitch marker in so that, <coughs> excuse me, when I do my second sock, it, you know, it will match. I have the same amount of repeats and all that. I don't know, you can see a bit of the pattern. <coughs> there is the pattern. Did I leave it in the bag? <coughs> nope. Nope, that's not it. There is the pattern. Nope. I thought I printed it out. I know I printed it out, but I don't know where I put it. And I can't remember the name of it offhand. Oh dear. And it's not in here. Oh yes it is. And I just made a big mess. So this is, it's called uh, the Austin Socks. So that's what they are. And so I don't, I did the heel flap and gusset. I did that. I normally do afterthought heel on my socks, but it's kind of nice doing the heel flap and gusset because the whole sock is done now. I don't have, that's all, and there's only two ends to weave in. So I don't have to, um, you know, go back and put in, it's done. The whole thing's done. Um, anything else about it? Not really. No, all oh, the yarn. So, but I'll just show you like, just kind of, so I can keep, cause I don't, I don't like to use a row counter cause I forget. So, well, I think last time I showed it, I was here. I just, that was where I was. So I did the foot, the whole, the rest of the foot. I think I was just nearly done with the decreases on the, um, the heel flap and gusset. But anyway, so like I told you, I put in the stitch markers to count the pattern repeats. And then I also, on right here, that's the first row. Um, that's the first row after the decreases, like the first, yeah, the first full row of the sock without, after I'm finished with the decreases on the heel. And then, so, and then here, and then I put another stitch marker there. So that's the last row before I start decreasing for the toe. So that way I can, I can, to double check, I can count from here to here how many rows I have to make sure, you know, they're, they're, um, my second sock will be even. Because if I were to do row counters and stuff like that, I, I just, I'll forget, I'll forget to turn the little dial. So the yarn that I'm using is this yarn here. This is what's left so far. And... I don't know what my problem is with yarn labels. I don't have the yarn. Oh. I don't know where it is. Okay, I'll tell you this. I clean out my craft room. I'm in the process of cleaning it out. It's about 90% done. And... I think in the shuffle of all that, I kind of, you know, threw away some things I shouldn't have thrown away. 
So I'm going to have to look in a previous podcast to let you know the name of the show because I can't remember it. But I do know that it's, I really don't know. I know that it's like at least 80-20, might be 75-25 wool nylon mix. Um, I don't know how many, I know it's probably got 400 something yards. Um, yeah, 100 gram skein, 400 yards, something like that. I cannot, I don't know what I did with it. Oh, well, I can look back and I'll list it down below. So anyway, so that's the yarn that I'm using. And this is living in my tea dottles bag. And I used, the needles I'm using are 2.25 um, Addy Rockets. A 32 inch cord and I I do magic loop I do cuff down yeah I do cuff down magic loop I think I cast on 64 stitches for this yes I did so that is that works in progress so I have to start the other sock soon and then I have I have another sock whip to share with you and these are my purple socks that I showed a few episodes back. So these are living in my Hannah Lou design bags. And I showed you this sock a while back. And it's finished. Well, it's, I always say that, but it's finished minus I have to put in a heel. And I'm going to put an afterthought heel in right here. This is where I, I have it placed. I have this marked off for where I want to put the heel and the second sock has this I didn't I don't believe I should I don't believe last time I showed the sock that I had started the second sock I think I started the second sock this past week I don't remember but anyway so here here we are with the second sock I've already I've got the heel placed and yep so let's see so I have that much more to do to get to the toe decreases. And I like my socks to match. I try my best. Um, so this yarn is Felici yarn. Uh, I don't know what year this is. I don't know when I bought this. I buy two 50 gram skeins. Um, I buy two 50 gram skeins. And one fifty gram skein is let's see a hundred, sorry two hundred and eighteen yards, and this colorway is Countess. It is seventy five percent superwash merino wool, twenty five percent nylon, and but I have to be honest with you, this this does not feel as soft, and is easy to work with as other Felicis. Like I'm looking at like this one. Here's another. Felici I did a while back yeah you could feel a big difference I don't know I guess they say you know I have heard that sometimes different dyes affect the yarn the, the difference in the softness yeah so this is not as you know I could just tell because I knit, knit a lot of Felici and um, I was like this just doesn't feel as soft as uh, normally Felici feels so the only difference um, is the needles. I'm using the Chow Goose, two, I'm still using 2.25, and this is a 40 inch cord. But everything else is the same. Well, it's not the same because the other one was a pattern sock. I cast on 64 stitches. This is just a vanilla sock. 15 rows of two by two rib. And this, and for the, I do about, for the body of the sock, I do between 90 to 100 rows. This one I cut the um, this a little bit shorter, and then I decrease for the toes, do top down, and just do a Kitchener, and that's my sock. Yes, and I told you about the yarn. So that is that whip. And let's see. So this next one is a hat, a crochet hat. Um, this was a works in progress last time. Sorry, it's all repetitive. But this is the Belliver 
pads. It's a paid for pattern that I found on Ravelry. Oh, well, I actually found it on YouTube. It is by Catherine Narona, um, and she has a YouTube channel, Catherine Crochets, that I came upon, and she releases a lot of tapestry crochet patterns, and um, they're beautiful. And I chose this one. I also did the um, the Belliver, Belliver Cowl. I did that. That was a finished object last time. Here it is. Here it is. And so I'm doing the hat to go with that. And here's the hat so far. I made a little bit of progress on it, I think. Um, yeah, I was just down. I was down here. So I had just barely started it because I kept having, I had to frog it a few times from, I made mistakes. So here it is. Like I said, it's tapestry crochet. And um, so this is, I, mean, I don't know if you can really tell. This is supposed to be, so the brown was my main color and the pink was the contrasting color. And so I did doing the opposite. The pink is the main color and the brown is the contrasting color. When I get the board, the pink is the main color. Yeah, I'm doing the opposite. So when I get the the brim on, uh, you'll notice it more. Can you tell though? It's hard to really tell. You really can't. I know I did it that way though. But anyway, so there's the hat. Um. When I bought the pattern, I bought it. I bought. I bought it specifically to do the cowl, but it came with the hat pattern as well. So I thought, well, I'll make the hat because it needs just needs something to go with it. All right, and so the yarn I'm using, I should have got some newer skeins. I'm using <clears throat> this is a Hobium yarn. It's Gazal Rock and Roll. And they come in 50 gram skeins. They are 125 yards. They're 21% acrylic, 70% polyamide, and 9% lana merino. And I'm thinking it's a DK, although I can't see that it says that on here. But the pattern calls for DK, and that's what I'm using. So I'm using these two. I don't know which uh, color number belongs to which one of these. So, yeah, so I'll have to start a new ball of this soon. And I can't really remember how much of the yarn I've used so much. I don't, I don't know that I started a new, I think I've just been using leftovers from this. And the crochet hook that I'm using is a four millimeter. And so that's that one. I like it. I like the colors. I love this yarn. This yarn, I like it a lot. It's a bit funny to frog. I will say that. So you got to be very careful. Go slow. So that is that. And this has been living in this bag, my Frog Peak Creations bag. Mm. All right. Let's see. So I showed you, so I have two more. All right, I'm gonna save my new cast on for last. Just get organized here a little bit. This room is clean, now my desk is gonna be a mess again. Okay, so You've seen this a bunch of times. I feel like this is never gonna end, this shawl, this knit shawl. But I did do a bit of work on it. Let me get all the yarn out. I don't need that. There we go. Okay, so this is my 
Stephen West shawl. It's the cable trellis shawl. It's a paid for a pattern on Ravelry. And yeah, so I think this was, this was it, was it, I, I can't remember now. Was it, I can't remember now. The hibernate, I can't remember. But anyway, whatever it was, it's probably long over with and I'm taking forever. So, so here it is. It's getting there. So this is, that's where I was last time I showed it. And so I've done all of that. And I can't see what you can see. It's hard to show. So this is it. So this is the shawl. It's really hard to show. But this is as best I can do because it's getting large now and it's getting scrunched up on the needles. <clears throat> I don't think that's gonna help. But anyway, you get the idea. There you go. That's better. So, I don't know, I still have a lot to do. <laughs> I have worries that I'm gonna run out of this yarn because I, this is, I've started this second skein already and I still have a lot left to do. So anyway, I think that's kind of put me off of the, put me off of the shawl a little bit because if I run out of this, I don't want to have to get another one. Um, so that's kind of, I think kind of just bummed me out a little bit when it comes to the shawl, but I, it's so ridiculous because I'll figure it out. So the yarn, I'm using these two yarns. So I haven't started, this is the main color. This is the contrast color. I haven't started this ball of yarn yet, but I have started the second one of this. And this one is um, Apothecary Fabrications, 100% uh, Fine Merino Wool Delightful DK. There's no colorway on here. It's 100% fine merino wool, 115 grams for 250 yards. See, it says the main color you need like 500 yards. So I have exactly 500 yards. I don't have any wiggle room or anything. I just need to like not worry about it because I don't know. It'll, I'll figure it out. And I still have a ton of yarn left. I might be worrying for nothing, but I've just got it. So, I, I, you know, I started the new skein and I'm looking at the amount of rows I have left and now the rows are big and I'm thinking, oh. So, but the second yarn is this yarn. It is the Lang Frida yarn, Merino Extra Fine Superwash. This is 100 grams, um, 100 grams. And the, there's no colorway on this. It's just a colorway number. Yep. 220 meters for 100 grams and it like I said it is 100% um, merino extra fine virgin wool and it's so soft oh it's so soft it's a little it's roving yarn and when I do the cables it kind of constantly wants to slip <laughs> but it's so soft and it's pretty <clears throat> and then the needles I'm using are, I'm using my Addy Rockets and they are, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter and it's on a 47 inch cord. And, oh, and this is also living in my, one of my, um, I, Cottontail Farms, I forgot. Bags. Another one of her bags. I have a lot of her bags. They're very nice. They're really well made. So that's that. That is that works in progress. And now onto my new works in progress. It is another shawl. It's a knit along. I'm way behind on it, but that's okay. 
I just started it. I heard about this pattern from Gina at the Knitting Turnpike, the wonderful, amazing Gina. She's knitting this, and I thought, oh, I love it. And I thought, I really want to start it, and I said I'll be behind because it started February um, 22nd, and I just, so I've gotten to see some pictures of what, it's a mystery knit along. And so I gotten to see some pictures of what it's shaping up to look like. And I'm like, I love it. And plus it's like inspired by the Princess Bride, which is, I love the Princess Bride. So here's, this is what it's living in. This is another Cottontail Farms bag. And well, I'll tell you about the pattern. Let's say I wrote it down. It's the As You Wish, the As You Wish, an Inconceivable MCAL by Knit, Lyrical Knits. And it is inspired by the Princess Bride. And there are five clues. It's a mystery knit along. Um, well, yeah, MCAL. But it is, uh, there's five clues. For, and it goes from February 22nd. That was the first clue. And then I guess the last clue will be March 22nd. So I'm not even, I haven't finished clue one yet. Because I only started this. Did I start it yesterday? I might have started it Friday night. I don't know. I didn't work on it today for some reason. So what have I... Oh, I'll just get all the yarns. I don't know what's attached to what. The yarn, hello. See, it's the only frustrating thing when you use more than one um, yarn, when you attach more than one yarn, it gets all tangled. Okay, so this is what I have so far. This is the right side. This is what I have so far. Like I said, I'm not even finished with clue one. Um, I don't even know if I'm close to being finished with glue one. I don't really know. But this is it so far. It's going to be different. See the little, that stitch right there? It's got a few of those spread out. So there it is. So um, this requires fingering weight yarn, um, four 100 gram skeins of yarn, and these are the yarns that I'm using. I'll show them all to you all together. I've only got three of them in so far. I only have three of them in so far. So, how can I show? So I have these two. So these are the yarns that I'm using. These four right here. And these are all, um, these are all Big Sky, um, ah, the Big Sky Yarn Company. That's their label. That's what all of these are. So this, so this, the um, specs on these, they're all the same. They're the Star Sock, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, 463 yards for 100 grams. And so this one here is, um, this colorway is Japanese Maple. And I will say, I got all this yarn out of my stash. I am very proud of myself. So this is Japanese Maple. And this one is um, Powder Room. That's Powder Room. This one is granite 
And the final one is Mr. Beam. I wonder if it's Mr. Beam. Is that because it's whiskey colored? I wonder. Beautiful. So there they go. These are the these are the two yarns. They contrast each other. So I don't I don't know like I never know how much you can go, but basically you pick four yarns. This so you have this is colorway one. This is colorway two. They said make sure colorway one, colorway two will contrast each other. They they're gonna go with each other mostly, something like that. Okay, and then three and four are these two. So that's how, that's how they told you to do it like that. And the needles that I'm using are, um, I'm gonna have to look, cause I can't see it on the needles, are four millimeter. And I'm using 32 inch, my 32 inch cords, four millimeter on my chow goose. And you actually, at points, use two needles. So you have, if you do do this, if you decide to, oh, that's, I should have said that this is, um, in case anybody out there is watching, um, and they don't wanna, and they're gonna knit this and they don't wanna see this, but this is clue one and they're about to release clue four, so I don't, I don't feel too bad. But at one point and at other points in the shawl, you're going to be using two sets of needles. So if you did decide you want to do this, you have to ha make sure you have um, like two sets of like the four millimeters or whatever. If you if you want, you know, if you need to change your your needle size, just make sure you have two the same. So that's that. Anything else? No, I think that's it. So that is that works in progress. Like I. I need another one and I can tell you right now, I have found some patterns. I feel like I'm gonna start a bunch of stuff. So I need to hurry up and get a few things done because I could just feel it. <laughs> I can just tell. I get bored easy and I sometimes it doesn't do me any good not to start something new <clears throat> because if I'm getting feeling a little bored with what I've got going on, I won't do anything. And sometimes if I start something new, it'll kind of ins inspire me to, to go back and work on some old stuff. So I will show you some acquisitions. All right. So first thing I got, <clears throat> a bit of a nitpicks order. They had a um, <coughs> Wool of the Andy sale. And so I got some I got some more of the Andes yarn. Um, I didn't get it. Well, it's it's kind. It's not a lot. I mean, not compared to some other yarn hauls I've done. But um, I ended up getting a sweater's quantity of this yarn. This is wool of the Andes because it was on sale. It was a really good. This is already a good price. Never mind. And I think it was twenty five percent off. I'm not really sure because they go from like 15% off to 25% off and within like th this is wool of the Andes and depending on what colorway, um, it could be a different percentage off. So I, I really don't remember. I know it was on sale and it's, it's cheap, regular price anyway. So anyway, I got a sweater's quantity of this. I got, well, more than that. I got, I got two pack, two 10 packs. So that's, that's plenty for a sweater and some. So this is the Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight. It is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's a number four. It's 110 yards, 50 grams. And this is the Fjord Heather. And it's not as soft as their Superwash, which was also on sale. But um, the Superwash, oh, I know that it, I can never, when it, it just grows too much when you make something and I can never get that right to 
judge that correctly, how much it will grow. And so um, superwash for socks is real good, but like I would like to make a sweater with this. I don't want to use that in a sweater. And I don't mind this not being a soft, it's not terrible, but you can definitely feel that it's 100% wool. So that is that I got. And um, then I also got this, and I wish I had, I did write down the pattern. Um, and I can, well, no, I didn't. Anyway, I'll show it next time. But anyway, so I got this Wool of the Andes Tweed. This is, I got seven skeins of this because there's a, a hood, a hooded, a cabled hood. Um, it's part of their, um, they have a new book of cable uh, knits. And it was one of the projects that was in that book, or you could just buy the single. And I can't think of the name of it. I thought I had written it down, but I don't see it. Um, but I'll show that next time. But this is, because I'm probably going to start it soon. But this is, I bought this yarn for that hood. And let's see what's about. This colorway is Lighthouse Feather. It is 110 yards for 50 grams. It is 80% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% Donegal tweed. So does it, can you see the bit? I think that looks about right. It's a bit bluer than that really, but I'm not sure exactly what, if what I'm, what I think you're seeing is what you're seeing. So I got seven skeins of that. It called for six. So I got seven just in case. And yes, and then because, <laughs> just because I got some more stroll, this was not on sale, but I love this stuff for contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs in my socks. And so I didn't have these colors, and so I got them. So the first one I got, just got one of each. I got one of these. This is Stroll Fingering Weight and the Dove Heather Colorway. It is 231 yards for 50 grams. It's 75% fine superwash merino wool, 25% nylon. So I got that. And then I got another Stroll. And this one is called Midnight Heather. So is that... That looks like, well, that's, it's coming out blue. I don't know. I guess it, it doesn't look, it almost looks black, but there is a tinge of blue to it. So that's what I got. I got this one as well. So that is my Knit Picks haul. And then the last thing I have to show you is that I ordered some yarn, for just one skein of yarn for the Barrett from the Barrett Wool Company. This is a company owned by Susan B. Anderson. They sell yarn, um, yarn kits. She makes the cutest um, knit amigurumis. Do they call them amigurumis and knit? I'm not sure, knit stuffies. <coughs> <coughs> so I bought the, um, yes, the Crooked Yule Cowl Kit which came with the skein of yarn in the pattern. The pattern only comes, I don't want to mess this up. The pattern is by Paula Imans Fusel. And um, <coughs> it's not, so it only came with this kit. It's not sold on Ravelry or, or anywhere else. Um, she, she passed away last year and they got permission from her husband um, to put this in the kit. So if you bought the kit, you got the pattern. But if you didn't buy the kit, there's no way to get the pattern now. So and this is the cowl. That's the cowl. <coughs> is there any other? I think that's about as good as it as good as it gets <clears throat> so I got the pattern emailed to me after I bought the kit and then the yarn sent to me see I'm pretty 
Okay, so I love how she sends her stuff. So with the yarn, it came in a bag like this. And I've already opened it with a bag. <coughs> I love it. <coughs> Excuse me. Every time I get around yarn, I start to cough. So it comes in a bag like this. And you see this, yes. And you get a coaster. So you yeah, see, it's the Cricut U Cowl Kit. And here's the yarn. <coughs> now the picture on the website showed it in like a gray yarn and they were out of that, but I got the next, I think the next best thing. So this is the yarn. This is um, Wisconsin Woolen Spun Evanfall. <coughs> and see, it changes colors. <coughs> Sorry. Here's the yarn. 450 yards, 114 grams, fingering weight yarn. And I don't know... I think it's Penny Gradient is the colorway. <coughs> Look at it. So this is another one. I feel like I'll be starting soon. I love. I like to make. I do like to make cowls, and this is beautiful. I wish um, that I had a picture of it for you that showed it a bit stretched out. You could see. Here's another. Oh, I'm gonna show. That would be bad. See, it's so pretty. So I'm excited to start that. I can tell I'm going to be starting. And I like this wool. I love this. This is my favorite kind of wool. I, um, just to look at, to have. Um, I love this, like just rustic wool. And so, yeah, this Wisconsin Woolen Spun Ebb and Fall. I'm pretty sure she sells this on her, um, the Barrett Wool Company website. I don't know um, much about, um, I know that she sells a lot of kits and a lot of them are amigurumis and I've bought them before. These cute owls that I need to make. Oh, they're so cute. And I can't remember what yarn that came with. But at any rate, there it is. And is that it? I think that's it. That's all that it came with. Oh, little st uh, stitch markers for, because this is fingering weight yarn for skinny needles. So I'll, I'll probably be starting that very soon. I can tell. And that hooded cowl, which I wish. Well, I'll show it to you. I think I want to do a video of patterns. Um, I have found a lot of patterns lately that I'd like to share with you. I think I might do a separate video of that. Um, and I will definitely show it in that if I do do that, which I hope I will. So that's it, guys. That is all I have for you today. This went a bit long, but I guess because I didn't podcast last week, I had a, a little bit more to show. So I hope everyone has a wonderful week. And it has been ridiculously cold here in Georgia. It, there was snow yesterday morning. So, at any rate, it's still cold today, but I'm ready. I am ready for the warm weather. And like I said, I have been... Can you really see? Not really. So, over there, over there, behind that mannequin, over that side, that wall, there was a, there was a couch there. It was a pull-out couch. Because this room is supposed to be... Was supposed to be... Um, also like a spare room for any guests that came somewhere they could stay and I just got so much yarn I had to move that couch out of here plus well what it was was there's just no room for anybody to stay here and I have other rooms my kids have you know my kids have moved out so some of my kids have moved out so I have other another room that um they can stay in so I said Let's just get rid of that couch. It's awful. It's awful. Anyway, the really bad mattress on it at any rate. So we'll get something new in the other room. And then I have more shelves. I'm not going to show you now because it's still a bit of a mess. So I put up new shelves and I've been reorganizing. All, my yarn back there is, has been 
organized much better. My yarn over there has been organized, so I've been working on that a lot this week, and it's almost done. So I can't wait, and maybe I'll show you that. Maybe I will. Um, I have a lot of yarn, a lot, and so I don't know, but maybe I'll show y'all. So that's it, and then I would like to do a video on uh, some patterns. Um, just, I thought maybe that, I love watching, I love it when um, other podcasters give, oh, I found these patterns, and they give you ideas. I love that. So I have quite a few that uh, I might do a separate video for um, in the week. If I was smart, I would do it right after this, but I know I won't. So yeah, guys, that's all I have to share with you today. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I will see you soon, and if not within the week, I will see you next Sunday. So until then, I hope you all are doing great, and goodbye for now.